Welcome back to Crucible Arms. Good to see you again. Basement Studios, one more time. Hey, um, Trijicon. The Trijicon ACOG, to be more precise. Um, a really, really nice optic from Trijicon. This is actually the ACOG ECOS. Uh, TA01 is the actual designation. And it is a combination of the ACOG 4x32 uh, scope along with a red dot sight on the top. They call it their RMR, which is Rugged Miniaturized Reflex. And this is a, actually a dock scope, I believe, or a dock red dot. And then it also has a set of backup uh, irons on it as well, although I haven't, I haven't used those at all. But uh, the other thing this one includes that other ACOGs don't necessarily include is this quick release. They call it their arms throw lever mount, and I really like it, obviously, and we'll show you how it goes on the, the rifle in a little bit. So why did I pick an ACOG scope? Well, I picked it for my Bushmaster AR-15. Uh, what I wanted is I wanted something that was going to be able to give me some magnification for some distance shooting. I also wanted something that was going to have a, a combat type sight, which the red dot is for things that are like 50 feet and in. Um, and then I also wanted something that I could easily quickly get on and off uh, the top of my A3 type uh, upper on my Bushmaster in order to go to iron sights in the event that there was a failure uh, with this particular unit. And this one kind of fits the bill. I mean, we'll go through all the, the details of it, but uh, for me, this worked out really, really well. And uh, we'll show you some footage of uh, some shooting that we did with this that we also uh, took from our Bushmaster uh, video that we did before and show you exactly um, the different uh, links that we shot at, the process of getting it dialed in. So we'll talk a little bit about the features and benefits of this particular uh, optic compared to others, um, its value proposition, things along those lines. But I can tell you right off the bat, uh, both my son and I, uh, Newser Dude, are very, very pleased with this site. Uh, it took a little doing to get it sighted in, but once we did, it, uh, it's a very, very impressive optic. The Trichicon ACOG. Um, this is, like I said before, it's the ECOS TA01, which means it's, uh, among other things, it means it's the dark earth configuration. And on my Bushmaster, I've got the dark earth uh, Magpul uh, furniture on it, so I wanted something that was going to uh, complement that. Compact, it's one of the things I really like about it. Again, I mentioned it's a, a 4x32 scope. Um, it's, it's a center illumination amber crosshair uh, reticle, and that's a real fancy term, but basically what it means is it's just a typical crosshair. Uh, but it does have tritium inside of it, and so it does not require a battery to use, uh, to use the ACOG site. And so in low light situations, in dark situations, you will get an amber crosshair that shows up inside. And again, what's nice about that is without a battery, uh, it'll always work. So you don't have to worry about in the field all of a sudden, oh no, I don't have a battery for this thing, it's getting dark, I can't see. Um, now, having said that, if you want to use the red dot, the red dot does require a CR2032 battery and you are going to have to have that, an extra one available uh, in the event that you want to use the red dot. There are also versions of this that you can get that will take in ambient light and use that, but this battery is supposed to last for over a year according to what they've said and as long as you keep it in a black box or in a dark room, when you're done with it, uh, it should last quite a long time because it does go off as soon as it doesn't have any light to work with. Uh, let's show you how this mounts because that's one of the things I really do like about this particular uh, optic here. Okay, uh, this is my Bushmaster M4. Uh, I've done a review on this and I'll annotate how you can click over to that. But I do have a, an MBUS backup site on here, Magpul, but uh, it will not co-witness. I'm not interested in co-witnessing. Um, but this mounts right in front of it so I can carry both of them at the same time. So um, safety check, we're good to go. Uh, the way that this mounts is you open these throw levers right here and then on the bottom you'll notice that there are little tabs and these tabs actually have to be in the upright position. It is one of the little tricks. It's no big deal but you got to know about it. So that means that really to put it on you've got to have it facing down so that those tabs will hang in the correct position. So when you do that, you mount it from the right side and you hook the right side of the ACOG on and kind of roll it over. Once it rolls flat, they lock in. But what's nice is you can take this back on and off and the zero doesn't change. It's been very, very consistent. So it's a nice tight lock uh, on top of the Picatinny rail and works very, very well. Again, they call it their arms throw lever. 
Uh, I'm not sure what arms stand for. I'm sure it stands for something amazing. But uh, that's, that's how you get it mounted. So it comes on and off, you know, very quickly and very easily. And so that's one of the big advantages that I like. You know, you're not messing with screwing it on, screwing it off, those types of things. Um, it's a premium. You know, you pay a premium for that. But uh, for me, it was well worth it. It does have onboard backup sights. You can see them here. You've got uh, a ghost ring back here and the iron in the front. Um, I actually, to be honest with you, have not used them at all. So I have no idea if they're any good, uh, if they work or they don't work. But they are on there. Um, you have got your elevation adjustment here. They are capped. They are waterproof. These are very, very tough units. They use these uh, over in Afghanistan and Iraq. The military uses these a lot. Um, so these can take a huge beating, get knocked around, um, and are completely waterproof. They're also, you know, uh, gas filled. The optics are excellent. Very, very clear sights. But you've got your, um, your elevation here. You've got your windage here. One of the things that you do have to do when you uh, sight this in that we found out is uh, once you've made your clicks, once you've made your MOA change, um, you have to give it a good wrap. And you want to do that so that you can take the prism and make sure that it knocks into place when you've done your adjustment. Otherwise, you can literally do an adjustment and there will be no change because the prism is just hanging where it was before. Um, so again, it's a tough unit. Don't be afraid of smacking it. Um, like I say, they throw these on the ground and do everything else to them. And everything that I've heard is these are incredibly, incredibly tough. Uh, in fact, yesterday when we were at the range, I uh, was sighting it in. Uh, we were talking to a guy who had done two tours with the Marines. He had done one in Iraq and he had done one in Afghanistan. And uh, he actually wanted to grab the rifle and grab the ACOG and, and shoot it. And he was just pleased as punch. He was like, yeah, this feels like home. And um, he really, really loved the ACOG. Thought out. it was a, a tremendous in terms of in battle. Thought it was a, a tremendous sighting system. Again, compact, kind of everything that you need. You can do close range with the red dot. Um, you can do long range with your four by. Um, so he was a, a big fan and we appreciated his input and we certainly appreciated his service and I let him know that. Uh, he wanted to go back and serve again, but evidently there was some sort of snafu so he wasn't redeployed. But uh, back to this, um, the, the reticle, and I'll throw up, I'll roll in a, a picture of what the, uh, the crosshairs look like. Um, it's also got bullet drop compensation in it, and so once you get it sighted in, the best way to sight this in is at 100 yards. Now, not everybody's got that kind of distance they can sight in at, so they're, you, know, you can do some things with uh, uh, different types of uh, targets that are calibrated for 25 yards or 25 meters, uh, 50 meters, but if you can do it, actually technically it's supposed to be 100 meters, uh, but we did ours at 100 yards, that's how our, our range is marked off. And then once you've got it sighted in at 100 yards, now you can use the bullet drop compensation that's built into the reticle to go further out. And so I'll show you how that works, but we did that. We sighted in at 100 yards, then we went to 200. And when we went to 200, we dropped one uh, hash mark, if you will, on the reticle. And I'll tell you what, it was bang on. And uh, again, I'll roll some footage in of what that looked like, but that was very pleasing to see that uh, it did that. It is calibrated. Uh, it says it's calibrated for the 223 round. Uh, we did it with 556, five, and again, it was dead on. It went from 100 to 200 yards. The drop was perfect, matched the reticle completely. So uh, you can feel real confident that once you've got this dialed in, it's going to work for you at all different ranges. Now, they're spendy. This particular unit is probably going to run you, I'm going to guess, between $1,500 and $1,700. Um, depending on where you get it from. So it's not an inexpensive optic. I'm not trying to tell you it is. I've got a Bushnell TR, uh, TRS-25 mounted on my um, Smith & Wesson AR-1522, and it's a terrific little red dot sight for, you know, plinking, and, and uh, we had it out the other day when we were sighting this in. Works great, uh, you know, completely reliable. Uh, takes a battery, you know, you've got a brightness uh, adjustment on it. Um, but it's certainly not going to match up in any way to this in terms of its ability to not only function multiple ways, but uh, in terms of accuracy. But it is, you know, that TRS, that Bushnell, there's nothing wrong with it. But you certainly get your money's worth when you step up and, and pay for something like this. And uh, my son will agree. He's, he's used this and the TRS-25, and um, there's no doubt that for the money you're getting a heck of a lot more, and you certainly should given what they, what they charge for it. So here's what I like about it. You know, I like the fact that it is, it doesn't require a battery for the 4 by to work. Uh, it does require a battery for the red dot. Uh, there are versions of it you can get where you don't have to have that. That would probably be desirable. 
Um, this does have the tritium for night, but this isn't the version that illuminates during the day. So it's not an illuminated rectangle during the day. For me, that's fine. I just like a really nice clear sight picture and I like just a simple crosshair. I don't want a big illuminated uh, rectangle sitting inside that I've got to look at. Um, for me, it makes it harder to pick up the target. It makes it harder to be precise. A nice, thin line, bright crosshair, which is what this has, does a much better job in terms of being able to um, get your target acquisition and, and do it well. So that's what I like about it. I like the fact the mounting system is, is wonderful. Uh, it's tough, it's rugged, it's very, very accurate. Uh, like I say, we shot at everything from 25 yards out to 200 yards so far, and it's just been dead on. Um, what don't I like? It doesn't come with caps for either end. That'd be kind of nice. Um, you can buy them aftermarket and put them on if you'd like to. Um, it also has a pretty short eye relief. So if you want to get in tight on it and get a really nice, bright, uh, full picture, you've got to get in pretty tight on this. And if you're going to run a backup sight, that means you've got to get your cheek weld up pretty far on it. Uh, it didn't take me long to get used to it, but it's not your most comfortable. Just put it up against your shoulder, drop your cheek, and you should be able to look right through it. You do have to move forward into it to get a really uh, big uh, sight picture with it. But it's beautiful. It is designed to uh, shoot with two eyes open. And uh, it's a process, I forget what they call it, I'll annotate it. But you have to kind of train your brain into doing that. You have to train your brain into being able to look open eyes and have the target go over, the small target if you are, or the amplified target go over your regular sight picture. Um, I get it to work about half the time, so it's gonna take me a little while to get that nailed down. but. Um, I'm looking forward to it because it's really cool. The red dot, same thing. Red dot's real simple to use with two eyes. That's, that's not a problem at all. So what comes with this? Well, you do get a nice hard case. Again, in, this, in the case of this one, you need it because you want a dark environment uh, when you're not using it so that your red dot doesn't just stay on all the time. It'll actually help uh, preserve the battery life. So you've got a nice case to put it in underneath it. Um, you know, an operator's manual. It comes with, uh, you know, also a manual for the uh, reflex sight, uh, what a Trigicon sticker, whatever, um, and then a, a nice uh, cleaning pen for uh, cleaning it up, obviously. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. That's what it comes with. Uh, you drop, obviously just drop it in, seal it up. So it does have a really nice rugged carrying case, even though the unit itself is pretty rugged, but you know, you can toss this around and not have any issues with it. So that's it, uh, the Trigicon. ACOG ECOS TA01. This is Crucible Arms signing off, and I really appreciate your stopping by. Take care.